Hey everyone, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. This is going to be part three of the master class in crankbait design. And we're going to focus on getting a deep diving crankbait. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Franco. I'm a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure maker, an avid fisherman. And I like to make these videos so I can add a little bit of engineering and physics to the art of lure making. In the last two parts of this master class, I talked about the design elements that make your lure wobble back and forth, or roll on its long axis, or even porpoise, like this. So while I'm going to be focusing on elements that are usually things that are important to lure makers, this is actually good information to have even if you're just a lure user because having this information will help you understand how the lure is working for you. And when you go to buy a lure, you'll be able to look at it and really kind of analyze the kind of action and the kind of depth of dive that lure might have. Because let's face it, you don't get a whole lot of information from the side of the box. And while the topics on those last two videos were pretty popular, I did get a lot of questions about those topics. The topic of how deep a lure will dive and how you can get it to dive deep has been probably the most asked question. And it's probably the most misunderstood part of designing a crankbait. So first, let's look at these three crankbait lures. They're all different sizes, but they have very similar bib sizes and just a little bit of a difference in bib angles. And if I were to tell you that these three dive depths, eight foot, six foot, and four to five foot are associated with these three lures, and I asked you all to guess which one went where, you would probably put them in order of size, maybe. Or maybe you would put them in order of the size of the bib. The length of the lure maybe? Well, I'll let you off the hook. You don't have to guess. The shallowest diver is the biggest one. This seven and a half inch stick bait with about a 45 degree angle bib. And then out of these two, the next one is this short golden crankbait with a slightly larger bib at about a 45 degree angle. And then the eight footer is this lure with a much shallower bib angle. So now, Everyone out there is trying to make some association between bib angle, bib size, lure size, and the depth that they dive. And if you were to guess that bib angle was very important for depth of dive, you'd be right. And if you were to guess that the length of the lure was really important for the depth of the dive, you'd be right. And if you were to guess that the size of the bib was important for the depth of the dive, you'd also be right. And that's really what makes this complex. The lure really is a system. It's a combination of the size, angle of the bib, the shape of the lure and the length of the lure. You can use all those elements to create a lure that dives deep or the opposite. So going back to our first couple of videos where I talked about the component forces that act on your lure as you're pulling it from your line, this red line going around the tie loop, um, these forces are broken up into component forces, one vertical and one horizontal on both of these. This one being the drag on the lure from the water, and of course that one's the line pulling on it. And as long as this vertical one pointing down is larger than that vertical one pointing up, that lure is gonna continue to die. And the key element here is the angle of your line going out and the angle of your bib coming off the body and striking the water as you're pulling the lure along. Now here's where there's some misconception. Most people understand as you move the lure bib angle from a relatively deep angle like that to a relatively shallow angle like that, you increase the size of this vertical force going downward. There's less pushing back on the lure and more pushing down on the lure, but that's only true if that actual angle remains close to what you set it as your design angle. Typically what will happen is the lure will pivot upwards as you're pulling it and then the dynamic angle, the actual angle at which it actually runs, changes, becomes deeper. Part of the dance here is to create an angle that you know is going to dive deep and then create a body shape that's going to try to keep that angle true and not have it distort too much. So let's bring out uh, my Krankenstein lure here. Of course, it's important that your angle be as flat as you can make it and still have the lure retrieve in a stable manner where it doesn't roll or blow out. And you want that lure 
to not pivot upwards. So that means having a very flat top and having that flat top extend out will bring into play more surface area as the lure tries to pivot forward. Moving your tie on eye closer to the center of area down on the bib for instance also works against that rotation. So already we got a couple little tricks and techniques to keep this thing diving deep. The other thing you're going to see on a lot of commercial lures and I think they do it because well it looks good it's sort of a banana shaped back a very arched back. So if I arch this what happens is you get less area as it rotates up. On the other hand if it's straight or even slightly worked upwards like that you get a lot more area a lot quicker with a lesser amount of change of angle. So now you have bib angle, tie on location and the shape of the upper surface not to mention its length and the amount of arch you have in your lure. Those are all things you can manipulate to get a deeper diving lure. Now let's kind of clarify what that means. When you cast a lure out a typical cast is going to be 25 to 30 yards maybe. If every lure casts that same distance the only difference between a deep diving lure and a shallow diving lure is the acceleration downwards. How fast does it actually dig down into the water? Because if you have a relatively shallow diving lure like this one that only goes four to five feet deep on a typical cast which this one casts pretty far. If I were to take this lure and troll it behind my boat say 200 feet behind the boat it would dive a great deal more. It would probably make it to 12 feet. It would just take a while to get there. So if you're standing in the back of your boat and you're casting a lure out, out your typical distance the trajectory of the retrieve of a shallow running lure is going to look something like this. It's going to go down get about halfway through the retrieve hit bottom hold there for a little while and then come up. On a deep diving lure it's going to dive very quickly hold the bottom for a little while and then come up. And right at the end of the retrieve you'll probably be pulling it almost vertically. So the difference really is the acceleration downward early and that's where the size of the bib comes in. Now a lot of folks will tell you the size of the bib doesn't matter but don't kid yourself size matters. What the size of the bib does is it creates a larger surface which means a greater force on that lure pulling downward. Now that doesn't mean it guarantees you the deepest dive but it does guarantee you a faster dive on the same lure. So if I were to take this lure and put a larger bib on it in that on that same angle it would dive deeper for the same given distance of, of cast. So let's go ahead and put all these elements together. I want a lure with a pretty much of a flat top with a bib that's just a few degrees off the horizontal and large. And if you really want to be extreme about trying to get a really deep dive you can actually flare your tail just that's too much just slightly it actually takes very little. You can also if this is looking down on the lure you can also at this flare flare it a little wider and make it slightly spooned out. That added area and this slight kick in the tail will create a tendency to push down on the tail and therefore maintain the design angle on your bib especially if you're using a big bib because that big bib is going to extend a long way out and have a lot of leverage. So this would be the optimal shape for a really deep diving lure. Now of course if you're just trying to make a bass lure with a traditional bomber shaped body this strategy becomes a little difficult but you can still use some of these elements. You can increase the length of the bib, move the tie on eye down the bib and you can also create a slight flat spot on the very top. When you place your tie on eye down onto the bib you have to be certain that you don't bring this tie on eye down below the center of area that's actually exposed to the oncoming water. So let's go ahead and put a giant bib on this thing. This thing is not going to last. So here's a giant exaggerated bib. It really alters where the center of area is going to be for the whole system for the body and the bib. So it's going to be somewhere down on the bib and if you go down below where it actually is you're going to be pulling up on it and it's going to become unstable. So you have to come down no farther than the center of the this area. And what I like to do is kind of be a little conservative. I don't like to come down much more than a third of the way from the point the bib leaves the body down to its end. That usually gets you within range and you can experiment from there but that's usually a safe spot to put it. So there are going to be a lot of factors that affect the depth of the dive of your lure. Things you can't really design for. Things like the current whether it's with you or it's against your retrieve. 
the wind because the wind affects how far you can cast the lure. Your line, if you're using a floating line, it's going to have sort of an upward catenary between you and that lure and therefore kind of hold the lure from diving at its maximum depth. And also the thickness of that line, if it has a lot of drag and you have a lot of line out, it's definitely going to pull the lure up. So for an absolute killer deep diving lure, you want long casting, you want the lure body to be long, you want a large bib set at a very shallow angle with the tie on eye pretty far forward and you want to run as light a braid as you can stand to run. Now, as I said in the very beginning of this, every lure puts together all those elements in slightly different ways. And it's possible to build a lure that looks like it should dive deep and doesn't. What I try to do in these videos is to give you the tools to make those analyses so that you can understand the lures that didn't work. Those are the ones that are important to understand. This way you can avoid those failures. Thanks for watching. I hope it wasn't a complete bore and I hope it answered all the questions uh, for the, all of you who've been asking those questions and waiting for this particular video to get put out. So drop me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we're going to get back to fishing and building lures on the next video. Thanks for watching.